I do think it's always the best when inspiration just comes to you and it just comes out and the next thing you know it's done because it really captures something. I think the album came to together a lot easier between the three of us because it was more a collaborative effort. There's some moments on this album, Bo seems to have tapped into a whole new dynamic range with his voice. There are certainly things I do with my voice this time around that I didn't do on the last effort. He's extra effective at communicating the lyrics because of those, of those dynamics and the range that he has. Everything I've done up until now, I've used just your basic sounds. You can get your piano, roads, and some basic synth patches, but nothing fancy. And this time really got to start into actually synthesizing sounds and creating those sounds and those feelings. I definitely think what sets this release apart from the previous one is the new level of synthesis that Jen is at. She just brought a lot of new sounds to the table that we haven't played with before. Even just the creative process of making those sounds really drives the sound of the song and even just the notes that you play and just how one really inspires the other. Over the past year, I've been listening to a lot of Porter, uh, especially Moctezuma and Las Batallas, and their synth work is just great, and their bass work too. The main bass patch that we, we use on the record is basically just inspired by that, and then we slapped a chorus and some reverb on it. Our last album, we had the bulk of it written before we even met Ben. So he, he kind of had to fit the songs that we already had. And, and with this EP, he was a lot more involved in the process and we could kind of keep his skills in mind when we were writing the songs. So I think it, that served us all pretty well. This time around, we got Ben right in the middle of his wheelhouse with some more hardcore moments. There's a song too that I think really plays on his experience playing in Bay Area pop punk bands. Guitar wise, I can't say that stylistically anything has changed from the last album except that I was listening to a lot of Rush and so I was maybe a little heavy-handed with the chorus effect on most of the album. But part of that is piggybacking off of Jen's synthesis having a certain retro vibe. And Bo's guitar work is, it's simple, but it's super catchy. The lyrics for this whole release were written in my favorite way, and arguably the best way, which is something that you don't always have the luxury of waiting on which is just like a burst 
of inspiration and it feels like almost as soon as you start writing, the song is done. The language of place is a reference to how our experience and sometimes even our worldviews, really deeply meaningful things are actually bound by the way we use language and the way that language is sort of tied to material existence. And I feel like most people acknowledge that that takes place with language. But there's a difference between thinking about something and really dwelling on something. And the more you dwell on that concept, it's really incredible how much of our existence and our experience is shaped by the language we use. So the three songs that contain lyrics, each of them is a different area in which what we think we believe and what we even state that we believe when it's funneled through the channel of language doesn't necessarily reflect the reality that we're living. So you can think of each of them as just a separate manifestation of that. Yeah, with Tiny Morsels, all I can say is I finally wrote what I consider to be a straight up pop song. It's a fun one. It's super up tempo and the vocals are really strong, guitars are super melodic. Our old drummer Austin actually filled in for a gig in the last year. And I know he's, he's a big fan of poppy music. And after I'd sent him the songs, my phone buzzed. And I was just waiting for him to say something, but he was like, dude, what is this pop song? Jen and I riding in flux was the moment this time around that like, sort of the, the new sound and the new direction was sort of hitting us. You know, we had found this really fat bass synth sound. It was just one of those sessions when everything was flowing and like every next move you do just felt so good and you kept going. That's a fun wave to ride. Bo did a really good job on the lyrics. And the first half and the second half are totally parallel. It helps them make more sense together than they would on their own and just paints a really cool picture. It ends really huge. I love it. Cuneiform translations is sort of, I, I think of as Jen's crowning achievement on this release because of, you know, I mean, it's hard to deny the layers of synthesis on that song. I think the exact words Bo used to first describe it to me after he wrote the, the bare bones demo of it was, super epic 80s space odyssey. And I think that's pretty accurate. Being an instrumental track, we gave real pause, I think, to what the title should be. And the feeling it gave off was one of just the, the big mysteries of life, like time and language and history. And I feel like it really encapsulated that well because the sense of like space and time sort of comes from the 80s vibe that the synths bring. But then to call it cuneiform translations brought in the human element of history. And so I think it's a really cool song to just chill out to and ponder the great mysteries. 
And it's a nice balance, I think, from the other songs that are a little bit more up-tempo and just kind of a nice little respite on the EP. Veils is super heavy. Most of this album is already in a fairly low tuning, but at one point when we were jamming, I took the bottom string and tuned it an octave below the string above it, which again was already low. Bo's guitars are tuned so low. <laughs> It's, you know, it's in a bass range, and so there's really only so much that the bass can do. And the fact that it is kind of on the simple side makes it a lot easier to just enjoy the song while you're playing it, and it's almost like you become more of a, a listener than, than having to feel like you're performing or something. The verses are really melodic, and the first verse is actually even clean and melodic. The range of vocals that Bo has on those different dynamics is really impressive. Life when life indeed exists outside. We sort of all agreed with what the outro needed to do, but man, sometimes when you're together, it's just not working. Like you can all agree on the direction, the feel, and all of that, and then you try it, and you're just not sinking. Just not quite getting to where we wanted to be, and just thought, oh, eh, let's sleep on it and come back to it. I went and sat down with just, you know, drumming software and the guitar, and then came up with something and it just happened to fit perfectly. The double and halftime tempos fell right into Ben's wheelhouse. And so the next time we jammed, like, guys, I think this is what we were trying to do, and I played it for him. It was just instantly, all three of us were like, yep, that's how it's gonna be. We got it. Yeah, Ben's insane. Even though Bo had the feels all mapped out and we kind of knew what to expect, I think Bo's and my jaws still hit the floor when Ben started playing. And we're really happy with this album and the songs and the production and and it's a good sign when you're you're happier with your new stuff than you are with your old songs and that's where we're at and it makes us excited to see what's next. <laughs>